Hey Vinyl Community, Jeff back again. Time for another on a five vinyl collection videos. This is the one, I haven't done one of these in a while, but focusing on what I have on vinyl for a specific artist. And as you can tell from the title, we're talking Government Mule today. Now, it's funny because I thought, did I ever do anything on Government Mule? I know I mention them a lot. I know I show a lot of stuff. I've picked up a lot of stuff over the years. But um, sure enough, I went back and looked and found out that somewhere within the first 20 or 30, 30 videos that I made, I think, uh, in that first year, somewhere in that first year, I did a spotlight on Government Mule. At that point, I showed mostly all of my CDs <laughs> and the one or two, I don't know, a couple vinyl records I had at the time. So we've come a long way in those, wow. Are we talking? We're in the pushing six years now. Uh, wow, yeah, six years of making videos. So here we are, and we're looking at just what I have on vinyl, and I found out, you know, I still have some gaps in here. Some of them are harder to find, but anyway, if you're not familiar with Government Mule, uh, Warren Haynes is a main songwriter, singer, guitar player behind it. He did some time in the Allman Brothers. So they're going to have that kind of a jam band, bluesy, uh, rock type feel. Anyway, um, so let's jump right into this because there's quite a few here and I won't spend a whole lot of time talking, but the Telstar Sessions. Now, it's I show this first, even though this album came out in like 2016, what this is, is this is the recordings that the band did in Telstar Studios sessions um, before their first album came out. So this is 1994. First album came out in 95. So this is like, I don't want to say it's demo material, but this is the first album stuff as they were working it out. So this is like the earliest recording. So I put this first in my collection just because it is the... Uh, the earlier stuff, and that was a you know a fairly recent, like I say, 2016, I think, reissue. Um, and then the first album, just called Government Mule, came out in 1995. Some of the, a lot of the same songs, um, but you know the actual album as it was uh, presented. So yes, great stuff. I discovered them around the second album, which I don't have, um, the Dose album. Um, I don't have it on vinyl. Came out in '98. Uh, so that is one that I really would like to get. need to pick that up at some point. They did have a live album that came out in between in 96. Uh, I have that on CD. I have all of them on CD. Um, and I think that's been on vinyl too, but I don't have that. So they're notorious for live albums. They're also one of those bands um, similar to uh, like um, Grateful Dead or whatever, where a lot of their albums come out. A lot of live, a lot of live stuff. The band releases a lot of live stuff. Um, you know, soundboard recordings and stuff. So there are a ton of that stuff. And then there are some official albums that get released. And those are the ones that you can find, you know, uh, on vinyl and places like that. And so that album, the live, the ballroom one, I do not have. But um, Dose, I'm missing that. And then we jump into Life by uh, Life Before Insanity. And, um, you know, just pick this up. This is their 1999 album. So this is around the time, and I mentioned this, when I showed a recent album I got by Government Mule, um, the Deep End album that I picked up a couple weeks ago, this would have been the last album with their bassist, um, Alan Woody. But this was the last studio album with him playing on it. So, and this is the one I showed the other day, volume two of the Deep. And this is where they brought in a bunch of guest bass players to uh, do an album. And they did one, volume one in 2001 and volume two in 2002. This is volume two that I picked up for a song and uh, looking to get volume one at some point. So anyway, great stuff. They had all kinds of guest musicians, everybody from metal people to weird, you know, other all kinds of styles of music. Of people came in and just did a bunch of uh, bunch of songs with them. Sounds very much like Government Mule, but with a little flair here and there. So and then back, uh, you know, the. Um, you know, things kind of settled down after that. They got a Deja Voodoo, which came out in 2004. This is where, to me, they really kind of fell back into their groove. And, and, and it's just an amazing, you know, record. One of my favorites right here. And I was glad to get that on vinyl. And it, it was hard to get for a while. They've done Dub Side of the Mule. More live material of them doing music that doesn't sound like Government Mule. Got to say that, you know, this is really reggae. A lot of reggae. They've done some stuff with reggae. And I will say, not really my cup of tea as much. Not some of my, you know, favorite albums at the time. 
Now these were, a lot of these were, and again, I've kind of, I think I've got these kind of in order of when they were recorded, not when they were released. Because most of these albums were released in like 2013. So, you know, years later, where they've done some experimental stuff. They did Dark Side of the Mule, where they've done, done, done a bunch of cover tunes of uh, Pink Floyd stuff. And again, these are all, you know, 2014 and stuff were when they were released, but I believe they were recorded much earlier. And so, at least that's why I've got them in the order I've got them in in my collection. And I hope I'm not mistakenly speaking, we're out of order. And maybe they're just out of order. Maybe that's the problem. So this is the stone side of the mule. And that's ma mainly them doing a bunch of Rolling Stones cover tunes. And they do a lot of live stuff and then they put them together. So, you know, Under My Thumb, Monkey Man, Paint It Black... Angie, Shattered, I mean, it just goes on. It's two records of Stones material. Um, it has been reissued, it's been released as Volume 1 and Volume 2, and then there is a vinyl edition, which is both Volumes 1 and 2. So you get the whole collection there. They've done that. Between the uh, Deja and, and By a Thread, there were two albums that I don't have on vinyl. One was called uh, High and Mighty great album i really enjoyed that album hard to find on vinyl it was only released like overseas like in 2016 or so um and it's hard to find you know without paying an arm and a leg then they did a follow-up album to that called mighty high so you had high and mighty and then you had mighty high and mighty high is where they really went all out with the uh reggae and i will have to say there's a couple songs in there that i can handle and the rest of it, I just, I don't, I don't. It's just probably one of the albums I just can't really get into or listen to. Um, and then again, you got some of that stuff on 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 the dubstep. So it was it was during that time frame they were doing you know a lot of that, just experimenting. But then when they came back in two thousand nine with By a Thread, probably one of my all time favorite albums. Just I mean it's just right back in there into that groove with the you know the previous stuff so absolutely love that followed it up with shout which is uh, again 2013 this is actually a couple years later they did this um but it's it's again it's a really solid album got a lot of great stuff on it so really appreciate that one. Oh, this is a record store day uh, again uh this is more of a single uh, girl with no self-esteem and bad of lies so what happens the band will put out bonus tracks on certain releases and if they didn't fit on the album or whatever, you know, they may release them as a single. So this was a Record Store Day single back in the time. I forget exactly when this came out. But anyway, I picked this up, you know, in a clearance rack at a place where they had a bunch of old Record Store Day stuff. I'm like, oh, great. Hey, Government Mule. It's been on my wish. It had been on my wish list for years. I just never. I'm not fast at buying singles. It's just they tend to be pricey for one or two songs but when this one was you know in my local store and dropped i went ahead and grabbed it so anyway so then it was around you know all of that time when they started releasing those live albums the stoned uh the dubbed all of those came out on vinyl at least uh, and so that's when i grabbed those and then that was like in 2014 2015 things like that then in 2017 revolution come revolution go i believe this was one of the earliest yeah, probably one of the earliest vinyl records by them I did get because I started buying records again in 2017. So, makes sense. Um, the frustrating one about this is they released it on vinyl. I think this is one that I bought like a campaign, a Kickstarter type thing where I helped fund it. So, the thing that was frustrating is they released a CD with, you know, a deluxe CD with like five bonus tracks. It was cheaper than the people who paid for the vinyl record and we didn't get the bonus tracks so that was that was my early days of buying vinyl realizing how it doesn't always work out in our favor i'm like i paid a lot of money to support the vinyl you could have at least given me the digital tracks or something but i didn't have access to those tracks that came out on the cd um and that was you know a little bit on the frustrating side um so i have since acquired them but you know Anyway, so then, uh, that was 2017. Then in, in 2019, they did a bunch of these, again, live albums. So this is live at Capitol Theater, Volume 1. It's a double record set. And then they did Volume 2, a double record set. And they're different colors of these. I won't go into all that. 
And then for Record Store Day in 2019, they released Volume 3, which is a single record set. And again, different different colors for there. So, um, and there are DVDs and CDs and editions of all of these songs. But together, you have, you know, all of that stuff from that sh uh, show or series of shows uh, from that time frame. So those were 2019. Um, and then in 2021, Heavy Load. Slightly different, uh, very much a homage to a lot of the earlier bluesy stuff that, you know, was influencing. It's, it's got a very, uh, at times, very old bluesy sound to it. So it's, 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 a, it's quite a bit different, but not, I, I thought that for the longest time. And then I revisited it like a couple months ago and I thought, you know, it's not quite as, as slow as i seem to remember it so it's you know it, it's, it's not quite the same but so here's another edition where they did this and then they released a deluxe cd edition that has like an entire i forget how many extra songs on it like almost a whole cd's worth i don't know six or seven songs but in this case there is after i bought this of course there is a three vinyl set that has all of those and it is on my wish list and one day I may get it. But it's one of those things where it's like, it's frustrating because I have the CD. Do I really want to buy another copy to get the third disc? Or do I want to get that copy and sell this copy or get rid of this copy? So it's one of those I'm on the fence with. It's been on my wish list for a while. If it drops in price, I may grab it. It's currently still hovering in the upper 30s. Um, but I have this. And then I have the CD, which has all of those bonus tracks. So then... The whole reason that really got me to do this one today is because I just got this in the mail yesterday. That's Peace Like a River. And this came out in 2023. And, you know, it's one of those ones I held off on until I was hoping it would drop. And it never dropped in price. But what happened is uh, I have an associate's program through Amazon and do stuff. And so I got a coupon, a gift card. And I used the gift card and then I had points on my uh, credit card Amazon account to where I was able to get this record for free. So I went ahead and, and and splurged and got one that you know didn't drop as I had desired. Look, it says that Heavy Load Blues is a Grammy-nominated album. Anyway, this is the follow-up to that. Same thing here, though. There is a regular edition and there is a deluxe edition with bonus tracks, but thank you, thank you for waking up. Um, Black Friday in November, they released the bonus tracks on this, Tales of uh, Time of the Signs. So the bonus tracks were released on vinyl as a follow-up third disc for people who bought the other. So there, now I've got all the songs. Then I bought this before I bought the album. Um, but there you go. So they did this. Now, if they went back and would do that with the Revolution Come album and they released those other bonus tracks on vinyl, that'd be great. If they did it with Heavy Loads where they released it without us having to buy the album again, they put out a third disc of just the bonus tracks, that'd be great. But this at least shows signs of maybe that'll be the way they do it in the future either initially release the vinyl as a three volume set or release it as a separate volume rather than two editions that I've got to buy two copies of if I buy one ahead of time or put them out at the same time so I can make a choice. Either I want to buy the three volume set or the double, but don't make me buy the double and then months later bring out the triple and drive me crazy. So that's me just ranting. So anyway, that's it for this one though. Government Mule, check them out. One of my favorite bands of that genre. I listen to them quite a bit and love them and hope you enjoy them too. So check them out and I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.